Hi everyone, welcome to SOMCZ Marketing and Events LLC YouTube channel. Today we have our very own Stephanie Gibbs. So I want to give you a little bit of background of how I met her and what I feel she um, brings to the table and then I'm going to let her tell her story. Okay. So um, she has this book, it's called The Best Girlfriends Ever. So I read it to my kids a couple times. And the reason why I love it so much because I love things that are inspired by someone close to us. And this book is actually inspired by her daughter. So she's going to give you the back history of that because nobody can tell it better than her. Um, but this book is a very good book. And you can also, you can order it off Amazon, right? Yeah. Off Amazon. Because I think that's where I ordered mine. Yeah. <laughs> so you can order it off Amazon. But it is a very good book. And she, this is the good part about it. She hands draw everything. So, everything you see in here, she did. So, you're getting creation straight from the author, the illustrator, and everything. So, make sure y'all go on Amazon, and we'll, we'll put it up again at the end. But make sure you go get this book. It's an awesome book. My daughter loved this book. She loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah, um, and she has a whole lot of things she do. She's a fashion diva. Um, she's a diva. She <laughs> loves um, dressing nice and all those good things. Okay. So I'm going to let her talk a little bit about, um, first, your fashion. Then mm -hmm. we're going to talk about your book. Okay. And then we're going to talk about what you have coming up this month. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank yes. you. Hi, guys. Thank you again. My name is Stephanie Gibbs. Um, I am an author, illustrator. I dabble in a little bit of fashion, um, stylist. I love to style people, style myself. And so basically that's, you know, I'm a preschool teacher. So I love um, integrating art and education. Um, that's basically how, how I was inspired to do art. I grew up in New York City and um, my love of art and fashion started there. So um, that's basically what I love to do. Um, I've always drawn. Um, I've, I've always loved it. It's, a, it's something soothing and comfortable um, that I love to do. And the more I do it, the bigger my ideas get. <laughs> Sometimes they get out of hand, uh, but that's just the way I, you know, that's just the way I do things. Right, so, right. Um, but I do. I love. I love to illustrate. Um, the writing came after the <clears throat> the writing part was um, something that I thought I was going to have to get someone to do for me. But, you know, it just came one night, one day from Virginia all the way back mm. home. I was in the car. I started writing. My husband, I was having, torturing my husband, having him to listen while he was driving. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> by the time I got home four hours later from Virginia, um, you know, the book was done. Handed it to my editor. He put it together. And, you know, that's how I do my book. So I work with a gentleman from upstate New York, Todd Shivin, um, Shivin Media Company. And um, he took on my project. He heard about my story. Um, and he just really encouraged me to write more books. So I'm on my second book, and um, Mommy and Me Under the Magnolia Tree. And that should be finished by the new year, by the end of the year. Like and <laughs> off, yeah, off <laughs> into spring. So I'm um, looking forward to planning an event for the spring, cross our fingers, planning an outdoor event. So we'll see how that works out. And the one thing I loved about her when talking to her, she always tried to incorporate family yeah. and kids. Even when she told me about the book, um, Up Under the Magnolia Tree, she talked about having to, going to the actual tree mm -hmm. and having a book reading and mm -hmm. book signing, which is amazing because she take, she's taking her creativity to another mm -hmm. level yeah. when it comes to family and kids and that's what we've kind of shied away from the pandemic kind of pushed us yeah pushed everybody back to having to do family <laughs> things. but um just seeing people bring out um bring families together and that's yeah. a good way well the more i started to illustrate uh after i had my my only child and the more i started to illustrate and tell my stories i noticed that i incorporated what was in my environment, in my community, and living here in the south or the south, southern part of the country, I always noticed the outdoors, the um, the trees, the flowers, um, how they smelled, how they radiate, the vibrancy of it. Um, and family, again, moving here to the south from New York, um, I just 
was just immersed back into family. Um, that family feeling of being around your grandparents, of, of being around uh, my cousins. And um, it was so funny, the, the neighborhood that I grew up with in New York, they're all here in the South, in the Southern part. Mm -hmm. um, they left New York one by one and no one was coming back, um, going to, off to college and everything. And everyone was just not coming back. So they were saying how great it was down here and um, the weather was nice. And I used to come down here every summer. Okay. For, you know, from, the, you know, you know, you would get in the car where they pack all the kids <laughs> after school, bring them down here. All my cousins from Brooklyn, Bronx, you know, Long Island, you know, we would all get in the car or in a, in a caravan and come down here. Um, my grandparents always kept a home. They kept their home here. Okay. So the house was always open and we would always have a good time. And so... When my parents retired, um, my girlfriends were like, move to Atlanta. Uh, you know, come, everybody went to Atlanta. And I was like, mm-mm. I mean, I love Atlanta, but I was like, nah, you know, I've got to get away from the traffic and the hustle and the bustle. And I'm right next to the beach and everything. And I just thought this right here would be perfect. You know, I'm close to North Carolina. I'm close to the beach. And I'm still close to Atlanta. Right. So I get to see them. So... Uh, my books are just based on relationships. Um, the more I write, the more I start to remember, and just the little things. So in, the, in, the, in my first book, it's a lot of symbolism. Okay. Um, the way um, a lot of it was taken from the 70s. Uh, should I? I'll tell you how old I am. I'm, I'm 56. <laughs> but a lot of it... Make sure you put young back. Yeah, 56 <laughs> young. <laughs> but my books are taken from my childhood, from the fashion that's how I also integrate what I love to do so much is fashion and styling. Um, I love that from the 70s. I was inspired by the way my mother used to dress, how my aunties dressed. So a lot of it is just really um, the more, again, the more I draw, the more that is what is being pulled out of me okay. and everything. So I, I just love it. And Okay, so let's talk about your event that you have coming up. Mm -hmm. Your very just the very first event in yes. this dynamic. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk about that because uh, I want people to know a little bit more about it, and then also if they can't attend this year, at mm -hmm. least they have it in their mind for mm -hmm. next year and know that something year. is going to be ongoing. Um, when I did my first book, my book is based off of my daughter Tiffany Nina Simone. Um, she was born with a neurological disorder called Rett syndrome. And Rett syndrome affects one in every, every 10,000 births, um, live birth uh, with girls. It affects boys as well, okay. but it really, it, what, what is really seen is girls. So um, Tiffany was born with this disorder. She was diagnosed at the age of three um, by a... Uh, by a neurologist and so we started to just do a lot of work to get her up on her feet um, with her disorder she never learned to walk she never learned to talk it was a regression so um, she saw a lot of doctors she saw geneticists neurologists great doctors here in Columbia South Carolina um, unfortunately Tiffany went from stage one to stage four in 14 years, really in 10 years. So there's stages that these girls go through, and they live, some live to be in their 40s, in their 50s. Unfortunately, Tiffany's disorder just ravaged her whole body within 10 years. Um, having Rett syndrome is almost like having autism, um, MS. Um, it just takes away your whole your whole body. Tiffany was she was sitting up, um, and then after that, that's where she plateaued. She never started to pull up. She never started to walk. So what I did with unfortunately, she passed away at the age of fourteen. And after that, that's when I was inspired to write the book, The Best Girlfriends Ever, based on Tiffany's ten year relationship with the children in our community, especially three or four little girls that came along and really it didn't matter that Tiffany was um, not able to walk or talk. Um, they, it didn't matter. They immersed themselves in her. They cared for her. They played with her. Matter of fact, Tiffany lived with them more than she lived with me. <laughs> she <did. laughs> These are funny stories. I laugh at 
these things because these kids love Tiffany so much. Eventually, um, Tiffany went to, to school. Uh, that's where I met her teacher slash godmother. Um, Tiffany's teacher, Sherry, um, I love Sherry. Sherry <laughs> saw that I was struggling as a single mom and then someone with a child with special needs. And Sherry came out to the parking lot. Um, I decided to go back to college at this time when Tiffany was three years old. I was rushing off to, the, to get to the, the first class eight in the morning and Tiffany's teacher came out into the parking lot and asked, can I take Tiffany home with me in the afternoon? So you won't have to rush from class and come and you know, just rush. And I was like, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I'm, you know, I'm like, mm, no, nobody's getting my kid. No, right. what do you want? You know, I just very just did not trust anyone. But I saw how Tiffany really bonded with her teachers, mm -hmm. and they had her best interests. They were the advocates for Tiffany. They made sure she got to her doctor's appointments. They kept everything on schedule for me. Everything. I mean, doctor's appointments, medication, everything, and eventually. Tiffany, uh, Sherry was like, I don't care, I'm taking your daughter. <laughs> she said, I'm taking her home with me. And um, I was like, okay. I went and I saw where she lived, of course, because you know how we do. Right. But her daughters there, um, they first of all gave Tiffany the side eye, too. They were like, because you know how kids are. They were like, she's getting more attention than I am. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was such a funny story. Um, then a little by little, you could see the kids especially the kids that came over their house to play after school, they did everything with Tiffany. They would sit on the couch and they would watch SpongeBob, play computer games. Tiffany loved it. And so when I would come in the afternoon or the evening to come get Tiffany, Tiffany's like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so eventually, it, it, honey, if, eventually <laughs> Tiffany was staying over there like five days a week. <laughs> I would come get Tiffany Thursday Friday, Saturday, Sunday, she would stay with me, and then Monday she was back at Sherry's. Then I would take Sherry's kids, and they would have sleepovers at my my house. They became sisters, and um, the moral of that story is kids just don't care. They don't care. They don't see. They don't see it how adults see it. Um, love is love, and that's exactly how it is. And Sherry. Um, has her own Sherry quit her job at Forest Lake Elementary where Tiffany was um, um, and opened up her own child care center and I'll yeah. get to that in her home um, she wanted to be home with her daughters and she wanted to be there to help other children with special needs um, but I love Sherry so after Tiffany passed away I said well you know what I don't know what I'm going to do um, I don't know what I'm going to do um, I went to the uh, fashion show in Columbia, South Carolina, Columbia Fashion Week. Um, I started sketching the models down the runway. Mm -hmm. Then I said, you know what? I really like this. This is, I've always, I, I always wanted to go to design school. I wanted to go to fashion design school in New York, and I was afraid to do it. Um, you know, didn't have a lot of confidence. Right. Then, um, after Tiffany passed away, I said, well, this is a great way to tell her story. Right. Then I started shopping around for an editor to someone to, to pitch the story to, and then that's when I met Todd Shivin from Shivin Media. Okay. Um, he took on my story for just, he just did it out of the goodness of his heart. He wanted to work with me. I started to do the illustrations and to tell Tiffany's story. Then I reached out to the International Rett Syndrome Foundation, they took on the story and they took on the book and the proceeds from the books go to the International Red Syndrome Foundation to find research, to, do, to find a cure and research. Mm -hmm. So that's where right. the first annual um, Strollathon will take place in Columbia. Columbia does not have a chapter. Uh, North Carolina, Atlanta everywhere else. Somehow it skipped over South Carolina. Mm -hmm. They do not have a chapter here for a strollathon. As scared as I was, I said, I'll do it. <laughs> right? I don't know. You know, I'm not great. I'm like, not great throwing parties. That's not my niche, <laughs> you know, with everything. So then I called on you because um, that also segue into the Best Girlfriends Ever Honors Awards 
which I do every year to celebrate women and children entrepreneurs in the community or women and children that are doing great things. Right. So that's how I met your daughter. I started seeing you and your daughter and I wanted to promote or I wanted to get to know you because right. I wanted to celebrate what you do because one thing having a child and a child passing away, um, I wanted to celebrate. Right. We need to give each other our roses, like my grandmother would say. You know, we go to churches. Right. <laughs> but we need to give, I, my grandmother used to say that all the time, right. give, your, give people their flowers while they're here. Mm -hmm. They're not going to smell it. They're not going to see it. It's no use. Mm -hmm. They even put it on their grave. Right. You should have been giving them their flowers while they were here. Right. So I said, you know what? Why don't I just do the Best Girlfriends Ever Honors Award, tie it in with the Rett Syndrome Strollathon, and that way it will bring more awareness. Right. So the Red Syndrome Strollathon will take place October the 24th on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, it will be a virtual event because of the pandemic. We decided that because the kids with special needs, we don't need to have them in contact out there in the, in the community um, because Tiffany is children with Red Syndrome are prone easily to you know, to get sick, get right. infections. Um, when they get sick, it's a whole deal. They end up in the hospital okay. from various just because Tiffany's, um, she had um, problems with breathing. She had seizures. Um, it was just a whole slew of things. Um, every organ in her body was affected eventually, little by little, over the course of 10 years um, with Rett syndrome. So, yeah. So tell them um, actually the date, the time, um, and how they can actually log in and donate. Okay. Because we're going to get the donate part. Okay, we we're going to donate go. now. We got to donate. <laughs> the um, <laughs> Red Syndrome Stro um, Strollathon, the first annual Red Syndrome Strollathon, will take place on Saturday, October the 24th at 10 o'clock. Okay. A.M. in the morning. It will be a virtual event. To donate, in, uh, if you go to www dot uh, south slash the middle slash carolina uh, dot strollathon dot org it will pull up the website on the website you will see different teams um, my team is team tiffany do you have a team no, you didn't you know, I, I didn't know if you I logged on I okay i don't remember <laughs> Somebody did donate. But yeah. And because they sent it to me and told yeah. me somebody donated up. Yeah. So I do have a team. She has a team. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Yes. But I have a but yeah. <laughs> That's what but I have a team. If you would like to donate under my team, it's team Tiffany is Hope. Or excuse me, Tiff is Hope. T I F F is Hope. So, yeah. And we're going to put all of this on the screen. So mm -hmm. I know y'all are like, oh, look, I got to write all this down. Yeah. So it will be on It'll the screen on for the you screen. to be able to read <laughs> and do it. Please donate. Business owners, please yes. donate. Um, donate to this cause. Um, get on the virtual because it's virtual. So you can be in your car. You can yeah. be wherever you at and you can be on the virtual and be able to participate. And mm -hmm. next year, prepare yourself October mm -hmm. to come out to the Strollathon and yes. actually participate because this is something new. For South Carolina, as she said, yeah. they didn't even have a team here. Yeah. So this was new. This is new. And we want to support Stephanie because mm -hmm. she's doing great things in the midst of what she went through. And it's, it's a legacy, basically. She, yeah. Her daughter name is being lived on through her, through her book, through all the things she's doing. And we want to always keep her uplifted, always keep her inspired mm -hmm. and know that she's doing great things in other children that she wanted to do in hers. Yeah. And even with this book, my daughter loved it. So she's making an impact in fashion and clothes like Kayla loves she mm. dressed up more than me I don't know if she tried because her mama is not like that but, um, <laughs> but you're so cute though only when I take pictures that's the only time I feel like get you're a pretty girl clothes. though you're a, but, yeah. but I'm not into the I don't have to get dressed up every day I can yeah, be by, no that's you why don't. I like this haircut because mm -hmm. I can pretty. just walk out the house and put some water on it and go about my way yeah that's the good and thing. the older I get the less that I want to do I mean the older I get the less I want to do, and that's really why I wanted to start my style page and do that and talk to women about, because less is more. I mean, people right. are struggling about, you know, how can I do this? How, just, it took me a minute to find, find my niche. I've been having the same dress pattern for the last 25 years, me and too. I don't have any issues with it. I keep it just simple, you know, from, I just keep it simple. So I'm going to start a style blog, and that's called Stephanie Gives Style.
Mm-hmm. So I'm just giving style. And again, that is to promote fashion designers in my city because when I'm giving you style, I'm giving you the style that is in my community from my friends, from business people, because it's, it's not all about me. It's, it's really what I want to do is promote and support women, my community, children entrepreneurs. I have never seen so many children entrepreneurs. It's a lot. And I'm telling it. you, I'm so <laughs> envious because we didn't have that. Right. I didn't have that. We had three choices. No, we had two. Go, yeah, three. Go to work. Go, go to college, college or, or go, go to, to the, the military. military. <laughs> no one showed us how to start a business. Yes. No one. I'm so. I'm like, man. I'm kind of short. It's like, can I? fool myself as a child can I fool somebody <laughs> I want to be a no but I'm just, just start saying, over just, just start, start over because these kids are savvy they know what they doing I mean I was so impressed with your daughter with the lipstick line with doing everything and these kids like there's a little girl now from Columbia on QVC mm-hmm. pumping her stuff I'm like man and you know it is just it's awesome to see these children out here knowing that they can start a business and they don't have to work for anybody right. if they choose, choose not, not to do it. Right. You know, um, and and they're getting educated about money. You're always talking about, you know, finances, right. financial literacy. Yes. These are something that the way that the world is changing right now. Our kids need it. Our kids need it. Yes. Definitely. I need it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Because I'm on the phone with Tiffany's girlfriends and they're all grown up now. It's Shania. Taisha, um, Kiara, um, uh, Altanese, and then there's an, another young man, Mal, um, uh, Mark Hill. They are all that. That's her core brothers and sisters. They're not by blood, but that, that's her family. They're all grown up. They're in their twenties. They have finished college. Shania just turned twenty one um, uh, last week. The last week in September. So they're all grown, and I'm kind of like emotional about that because mm-hmm. the best time of my life was spending time with them and watching Tiffany have a family because the first thing I prayed about when, the, when Tiffany's pediatrician, Dr. Grooms, called me into her office because we realized something was wrong, um, I prayed that she would not be alone. That was my first prayer. Mm-hmm. My first prayer was like, oh, my gosh, she's not going to have any friends She's going to, because you know how, you know, kids are shunned. Mm -hmm. Kids can be mean. Um, You know, Tiffany never experienced a day of bullying because of those girls. Those girls were like her armor. They was like, nobody messed with her. Nobody. And they were like, you, they were like, they were like, you better not. Right. They would look at people like, and I would be in public like, why are you giving people the stare down? And, you know, they were like. they looking at her wrong. Yeah. They, and then even that, and they would be like, you know, they made sure Tiffany did not suffer a day. That's good. And Tiffany was so rotten. I mean, rotten. That when I got her back home with me, I was on the phone with those girls like, okay, Tiffany's not. <laughs> What, what I need to do. What, what I need to do. And they were like, oh, just turn on this channel, give her some chocolate pudding, and blah, blah, blah. And her favorite oatmeal. I didn't even know her favorite, like, oatmeal. Like, they had her spoiled. They had her spoiled. My mom had her spoiled. Tiffany had four bedrooms one at Sherry's house, one at my house, one at my grandmother's house. <laughs> she was spoiled. So she enjoyed her life. She enjoyed her life. And that's why I can sit and laugh. And that's why I can sit and talk to her and not cry. And certain things set me off. Like if I see a child in my class, there's a little girl in my class right now that looks just like her in a way. Big eyes, long hair down the back, same skin complexion, and I look at her. And, but I don't have that effect if, if I had seen her 10 years ago. I would just like bust out in tears. So it's a process. But I think about all the good things that I was able to do with Tiffany. Um... It wasn't easy. I don't ever want to come on and make it sound like every day was the great because it wasn't. Right. It wasn't. It was a different journey. Store and you always had, and I. That's when I almost lost it mm. because to see this girl all grown up and, and remember she remembered you. me and Tiffany in the community, because Tiffany and I went everywhere. We went out, and I tell people, parents with children with special needs, don't hide your children. Right. Tiffany and I went everywhere. Wherever I was, Tiffany was. And wherever, you know, I made, and even though my schedule, I had to work two jobs, I went back to college, I still made time for Tiffany. We went to church together, we did everything together. And um, I just, you know, I just, I, I don't have any regrets. 
Awesome. Any regrets. So as you can see, Tiffany has inspired mm-hmm. not only her mom, mm-hmm. but the community even in her absence. Mm-hmm. So I would like you all to, we're going to put everything on the screen, but listen, go get this book off of Amazon. And as she said, all proceeds go to the Red Syndrome. And also tune in for October the 24th. Go follow Stephanie Gibbs on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And so you can see all the good things she's doing in the community. The fair from fashion down to the books, down to the kids. And also be prepared for her next book. Mm-hmm. So until next time, deuces. Deuces. <laughs>